What's going on YouTube? It is Cole from Midwest Strippers here today to show you guys my new IPv4S sent to me from the guys over at VaporizerChief.com. I gotta give you guys a shout out. Every time I had a question, every time I needed something, they hit me up super, super fast. But anyways, this is the new IPv4S 120 watt box mod from Pioneer for you. This is an awesome device and it's a clear upgrade over the original IPv4. I was looking on VaporizerChief.com. They've always got some type of promotional deal going on. I didn't see anything, but a prompt box did pop up to say subscribe to our newsletter. I went ahead and did it, saved me 10%, taking the price down to $67.50. $67.50 with free shipping. I thought it was a total steal. So if at any point you guys wanna purchase this, I went ahead and left a link in my description down below for their online storefront. Right off the bat, Pioneer for You just took the original IPv4 box and said, fuck it. Let's just slap a sticker on it and tell everybody that it's the new device inside. We're not even gonna make a new box. You can clearly see on the back that it says seven watt to 100 watt, which is obviously the older model specs. It's lazy as hell, but honestly, I'm in it for what's inside, not the packaging. But come on guys, you're a big company. You drop the bar in my opinion. Inside, you'll find a certificate of authenticity, a warranty card that covers you from all the manufacturer defects for three months from your purchase date. They've also included a battery safety card, which is always nice to see a company invested in their product safety. Finally, you've got your standard instruction manual that tells you the ins and the outs of the IPv4S as well as your USB cord. Taking a look at the mod itself, you've got a spring-loaded brass 510 connection on the top here, and on the flip side, some holes cut out of the casing to help those batteries breathe. I haven't had any issues with it overheating so far, but it's cool to see that it's there. You've got your Pioneer for you logo as well as your IPv4S branding laser etched into the device down here. I am a huge fan of subtle branding. I don't want a box mod with a giant logo plastered on the side that says, hey, look, this is our company. So for them doing that and just putting that little in the corner, you get my stamp of approval. Overall, this thing is beautiful. I got the stealth black version, which is constructed with high grade aluminum. You can see it here with a little bit of light scratching. The paint comes straight off. I can tell you though that over time, it is going to get chipped up. You are gonna see scratches on it. Not a huge deal in my eyes. I don't have any scratches over the last two weeks, but I do baby my mods. It's like my fiance. If I treat her well, she treats me well. That sounded a little bit weird. The shell is wrapped with a rubber textured grip, which is super comfy to hold in your hand, and it helps make sure that you don't have any excess heat from your batteries. I also want to point out that the grip does make it virtually slip free. When you pop off the grip, you'll notice the batteries housed underneath. There's no magnets, but instead you've got these ball bearings that fit snug into these plastic grooves to lock the shell into place. It does make me question the durability a little bit. I think over time you might see this get a little less tension, but at the same time, I can't say that until it happens, and right now I'm in the clear. One thing that does trigger my OCD though is that this thing only slides in one way. You can't slide it this way and it pisses me off sometimes when I'm not looking. You've got space inside for two 18650 batteries to run on a series. They're super easy to pop in and even easier to pop out with this ribbon that's attached. On my Segele 75 watt, I have issues with the outer battery casing getting caught in the inside when I'm popping them in and out. Not a problem here. The original IPv4 didn't come with a cord to charge and people were having a ton of problems with the charging port. So Pioneer for You just temporarily fixed the problem by plugging the hole. Honestly though, it's not that big of a deal. You can't even see the port whenever the case is on anyway, so what the hell. To turn your device on, just click the fire button five times and you'll see the Pioneer for You logo as well as IPv4S showing on the display. A big gripe on the IPv4 original was the mirrored screen. As you can see, they've completely scratched that and the new display looks beautiful. Right away, if you hit the fire button, you'll get the check atomizer message. I'll go ahead and screw on my Playboy tank and hit both plus and minus buttons to set my resistance. It's super important that you do this every single time you screw on an RDA or a tank. Five more clicks on the fire button bring up my menu. You can turn the system off by hitting the off button. Click again for your jewels mode, which is your temp control. You can set it to Fahrenheit or Celsius. I'm gonna go ahead and click Fahrenheit by pressing the fire button. I've got it running at 500 right now. I'll click the fire button to lock it in again, and then you'll select what type of wire you're running. It works with nickel or titanium. I haven't messed with any titanium wire so far, but it's cool that that feature is there just in case I wanna dibble dabble in something new. I'll hit the up button and give it a vape. That flavor is incredible. 
I know I wasn't gonna jump into the nickel thing for a while. I thought the temp control kind of was a gimmick, but God, I'm so glad that I tried it out with this thing. It honestly gives you a customizable hit every single time and the flavors are there that I just didn't get out of Canthal. When you're on your main screen, the Jules presets come in increments of 10. Hit the negative button at any time to go in between those margins. One little complaint is that you can't set your own presets in temp control mode. Not a huge deal, but I do wish it's something that you could do. Let's click the fire button five more times to get back to our menu screen. Scroll through until we get to our mode setting and switch it to power mode. You'll again need to exit to get back to the main screen. And here we have our standard watts. I'm gonna switch over to an RDA real quick as I never use my nickel wire in power mode just for safety reasons. I'll set my resistance again by clicking both the up and the down buttons and I'm ready to go. So, when you click the up button, you'll cycle through your own presets. You can click the down button to go in between the margins again. Once you find your desired watts, click the fire button to lock that preset into place. I love this feature. It makes it super easy to get to your presets with just a few clicks of a button. Clouds for days, son. Woo! This thing chucks it. Overall, this thing is an absolute bargain for the price. I'm pretty new to the vaping thing. I only have one other box mod currently, and it's the Segeli 75 watt. I shelled out 80 bucks for it, and honestly, I loved it whenever I had it, but after using this thing for two weeks, it completely blows it out of the water. The batteries are incredible. I vape it all day long at work. I come home, vape it. I probably get anywhere from like 10 to 15 milliliters vaped throughout the day in my tank, and I still have battery left over, and honestly could probably go halfway through the next day before I needed to pop the batteries on and charge them again. The mod just feels great in your hands. I was kind of iffy about this rubberized thing right here, but the shell works really well. It doesn't feel flimsy, it doesn't feel like it's gonna pop off ever, and I'm really impressed with it. I do wish the paint would hold up a little bit better, as you can see from scratch test. It didn't hold up real well, but I don't have any nicks on it so far. I just know it's something that's going to happen inevitably over time. The original IPv4 didn't come with the option to run titanium or the temp control, I believe, but they do have a firmware update right now. Pioneer for you, I'm not here to bash companies, so I understand what you did. You messed up, you goofed up, so you put out a new product instead of just telling everybody, hey, here's a firmware update we're gonna release with it. I'm not personally mad at you because I didn't shell out the money for the older device. I just got the new one, but I do understand where all you guys are coming from. Trust me, it happens with me every year with Apple. I get my iPhone, it's super dope, super awesome features, and then bang, eight months later, whatever it is, the new one comes out, the 5S, the 5C. It's gonna happen over time, but I do feel for you guys because this, in terms of just the overall product, the screen, just feels like a better box. At least all of you guys with the older model still have that opportunity to update and get it to the same specs. That's all I've got for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the review as much as I'm enjoying my IPv4S. If you guys like the videos, hit that like button down there. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep tuned in to more vape-related reviews and videos. There's a lot more to come. You can follow me on Instagram at Midwest Drippers. Until next time, vape heads. Mm. Why can't we all just get a mod?